Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Luke writes, Jesus said, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet, so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord. Amen. It's been seven days since Dayton, Ohio. Eight days since El Paso, Texas. 14 days since Gilroy, California, 72 days since Virginia Beach, Virginia, 96 days since Highlands Ranch, Colorado, 103 days since Charlotte, North Carolina, 106 days since Powa, California, 177 days since Aurora, Illinois, 195 days since Houston, Texas, 197 days since Ascension Parish, Louisiana, and Livingston Parish, Louisiana, and 201 days since Sebring, Florida. I don't think I need to go any further. This list is just 2019. This list is also just mass shootings in the United States. This doesn't take into account any of the other terrible and atrocious things that go on in our world. I don't have to stand here and tell you that we live in a dark world. We live in a world that sometimes feels filled with evil. I also don't have to tell you that sometimes it is really hard to see the light that shines within each of us. I think about God's creation in the Garden of Eden. When God created man and finally called something very good instead of just good, my, how far we've come since then. But I also know that this world isn't the world we were destined to be in. I know that creation has fallen. Humans have free will and can make their own choices. And boy, do we make some not great choices. We also make some really good choices. It's part of being human. I know that this isn't what God intended for us. And when I listen to the scripture lessons for this morning, I know for a fact God wants better things for us. God wants to give us paradise, to give us good and wonderful things, whatever those things may be in our lives. Yet sometimes we're too stubborn to accept it. This morning I want to look at each of our texts individually to see the promises that God has in store for each of us and what we can learn about our own lives, especially when we only see negative things around us. In our Old Testament reading, we hear the promise God gave to Abraham. In our lesson this morning, he's still referred to as Abram. His name hasn't changed yet. But we heard the beginnings of the promise. God says that even though Abraham and Sarah were up there in years, our New Testament reading says they were just about dead, and well past the age of bearing children, that through them the Israelites would be formed, that a mighty nation would come from them. God tells Abraham to count the stars in the sky. This is how many descendants he would one day have. An unlimited amount of heirs. A great and mighty promise. But to Abraham and Sarah, this must have seemed preposterous. A not very funny practical joke. 
I wonder how much trust and faith it took Abraham and Sarah to know that what God said, God would do. Do we have that much faith today? Abraham and Sarah looked at their circumstances and the facts that surrounded them. They knew they were past childbearing age, yet God promised. So they took a leap of faith and trusted God, even when the world and what they cognitively knew told them wouldn't happen. They trusted in God. Then I think about our lives today. When I look around and see the evil abounding, it takes me a while to believe that good things are actually coming, that the kingdom of God is imminent, but not yet here. Yet God promises. And like Abraham and Sarah, I need to trust in God's promises. We all do. Because God has yet to fail us. Circumstances may tell us one thing, but God says another. God wants to give us good promises, good blessings. He wants goodness to abound. And it does. We just have to find it. God promises us things, and I will side with God any day of the week. But sometimes that takes a whole lot of faith and trust. A whole lot of faith and trust in something we can't always see clearly, just like Abraham and Sarah. Then in our New Testament reading this morning, Paul's letter to the Hebrews, we hear Paul celebrating the faith of Abraham and Sarah, that they were called out to receive an inheritance, but didn't know when or where that was going to happen. They trusted God, even when it looked like nothing would happen. Abraham and Sarah had faith. And in Hebrews, we learn that faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the convictions of things not seen. And it's that last part that always gets to me, the convictions of things not seen. Faith means putting your trust in something that you can't see clearly, that you can't just look out your window and see, but it's there. And this type of faith is what we need today. We need to continue to have faith that God has good things in store for each of us, even when we can't see how it will play out. We need to somehow muster up enough faith that the kingdom of God is coming nearer, even when all we see is evil things. We need to have faith that God show, showers us with good things, even when we can't see them. One day in the future, it would be cool to have someone like Paul write about us, that even in the face of adversity, we had faith like Abraham and Sarah. Even when circumstances seemed against us, we held on to our faith. We trusted in all of God's promises. And then finally, in our gospel this morning, we are reminded to not be afraid. Jesus opens with, do not be afraid, little flock. I think often our initial response to things is fear. Like sheep without a shepherd, we sometimes fear the world around us. Yet we aren't sheep without a shepherd. We have the best shepherd looking out for us. We have no reason to be afraid. Our gospel continues with, It is God's good pleasure to give us the kingdom of God. It pleases God to give us good things. It reiterates that God wants to give us all the good things. He wants to give us paradise. And then Jesus goes on to explain that the kingdom of God will appear like a thief in the night. And it is our job to be prepared. Because we don't know when the kingdom of God will arrive. For if we knew when the thief was coming, the thief wouldn't be able to break into our lives. And our lives would look vastly different if we knew the actual date and time of when Jesus was coming. If we knew exactly when the world was going to end, or when Jesus was going to come, or when anything was going to happen, would we have daily faith? Would we rely on God? Would we do good things? Because of this, we are not told when the thief will be coming. Instead, we are to live each day to the fullest, trusting in God and being prepared for whatever may come. So how then do we have faith? How do we be prepared, and how do we share the good news? How do we have enough faith to continue to trust that God sees everything, weeps with us when we hurt, yet still go about our daily lives, preparing for the kingdom of God? How do we muster up enough faith to step outside of our doors, 
when we continue to turn on the news to see horrific and evil things? How do we have faith? These are the questions I wrestle with, and I have a hunch I am not alone. In all of our readings this morning, we hear the theme that God watches us. God watches God's creation. Psalm 33 says, The Lord looks down from heaven and sees all humankind. God sits firmly enthroned and watches all who dwell on this earth. God knows what's going on. God not only watches us, but wants to watch us and give us good things. But that pesky free will, that little thing of humans getting to choose. I do know that we someday will inherit the kingdom of God. And I don't know about you, but there are days when I am ready. And sometimes I'm ready for that thief to come. Don't get me wrong. I love this life that I live. I love our community and our church. But every time I turn on the news or scroll through a Facebook feed, my heart gets sad by the amount of hurt we inflict on one another. And for what? I know that these are not the good things God promises for God's creation. I know that sometimes what I see isn't the kingdom of God. But God does promise. And like Abraham and Sarah, when I look at the circumstances around us and the facts that we face, I have to put my trust elsewhere. I have to put my trust somewhere that isn't the world. I need to trust in God's promises. Like a thief in the night, Jesus will show up one day and right all the wrongs. He will give all the justice to those who are oppressed. He will free all of those who are imprisoned in body, mind, or spirit. Yet. There's that little word, yet. Until that day, it is our job to spread our lights as far as we can. Small, daily changes, small, daily doses of light make a huge change in the world. And one way we do this is by doing good things for others. By sharing kindness, by smiling, by sharing joy. This is how we build not only our own faith, but also how we share our light with others. We are to continually put our faith in God that the evil we see in the world is the exact opposite of what God intends for us. And not only are we to put our faith in God, but we are to be always prepared for when God's reign will begin. And the other part of this gospel that gives us hope is the idea that where our treasure is, there our heart will be also. This world is finite. It will end. Between that and the evil that abounds, our earthly treasures will never give us the joy and happiness we search for. Only God can do that. And when we place our joy, gratitude, and treasures in God, where nothing can destroy them, we are able to live more fully in this life. We are able to have faith in God, knowing that our treasures are protected. We are able to look at the circumstances around us and still have faith that God's kingdom will come and right every wrong. As we share our lights with others, as we share joy and kindness, as we do good things for ourselves and for others, we are storing treasures in heaven where we can keep them forever. And they can help us remember that we aren't destined for this world. But for the time being, we can share joy. It's been seven days since someone helped an elderly man off of a subway car. It's been eight days since someone gave up their seat on the bus to a pregnant woman. It's been 14 days since a police officer rescued a bunch of ducklings. 72 days since a kid shared their ice cream cone with someone who had none. 96 days since someone paid for someone else's coffee. 103 days since a firefighter sat with a lonely man. 106 days since someone paid for someone's dinner. 177 days since you sent someone a card letting them know you were thinking of them. 195 days since a rainbow appeared in the sky, reminding us of God's promises. 197 days since a meal was shared with a stranger. And 201 days since laughter lit up our world. The good things are just as abundant as the evil. God's kingdom shines through the darkness. We just need to continue to have faith that God's promises will be exactly what God says they are that God will continue to shower us with good things. Keep track of the good things that happen in your life. Store your treasure in heaven. No one can take it from you.
Continue to have faith in God's promises. Amen.